half of Generation Z voters said they have lied about their votes, according to a new Axios Vibe survey by the Harris Poll. Among the Gen Z voters in the survey, 48% said they had previously lied to those with whom they are close about which candidates received their votes, more than double the 23% of registered voters across all age groups that said they had previously done the same. The survey took place October 22nd to 24th, only a few weeks out from Election Day, which will follow a chaotic and heavily polarized campaign season. The 2024 general election brings with it multiple key Senate and House races, as well as a heated competition for the presidency between former President Trump and Vice President Harris. In the Axios and Harris survey, 22% of the registered voters said they might lie to someone close about the candidates they cast their ballots for in the 2024 election, while 78% said they wouldn't. The intense polarization in this election cycle might result in some staying quiet or lying on the topic of their political beliefs and around friends and family. Harris and Trump were only separated by 0.6 uh, points in an advanced average of polls from the Hill slash Decision Desk headquarters. The Axios Vibe survey featured 100, excuse me, 1,858 registered voters and the 2.6 percentage point margin of error. You know, it's really sad that people feel as if they have to not be truthful with just things relating to elections because even as a person that does not like you know Trump at all um, would under no circumstance vote for him I would never want members of my family or people that I would consider myself close to to believe that they'd have to keep the fact that they support him or would consider supporting him away from me and oftentimes when I'm in front of more, I guess, um, just, you know, the, the people who are like so disenfranchised where they wouldn't even consider voting for anybody, which they, they exist. And I think they have a point to their frustration. I tend to not really argue with them about this at all. I don't, um, even if I have my reasons for why I may like someone or don't support someone, etc. I'm inclined to just, just listen to them and kind of like nod my head. Uh, maybe I'll say something that kind of, it doesn't really hint at who I would support or, you know, it's something that's kind of more in line with their own general belief system. And yes, because I just really, I don't enjoy um, arguing with people about this stuff. You know, I've said before that a lot of times when people have these debates at these different conventions, um, that can be productive you know, depending on who's listening and who's not. But when it comes to just, you know, day-to-day -day living and, oh, you heard this story on the news, this person said this or that person said that, you know, I just, I, I don't really see a, a, a point to it. It doesn't, it's not a thing that um, I'm incentivized to participate in. But no, I hope that, you know, as this cycle, because I, I think we're just going to keep having more polarization. Like, it, that's just the thing that's going to, you know, keep going um, and getting worse as more time passes. I hope at some point there will be some unifying set of issues to where voters can, uh, you know, just be rational. I mean, if you support Trump, you're told that you are anti-democracy and you're against... Uh, women and you know all the rest of that stuff and then if you're backing Harris uh, you're told that you're for open borders and you hate Israel and all the rest of this you know just nonsense um, and what it is is that people project onto the voters what they believe of the candidate so even if you're not you know there's people not everyone who's for example supports the Democrats is pro-choice but they'll, you know, attack you over that position, even if you've never directly said that you're for it at all, because it's about taking the politician and addressing them through the people that back them versus trying to hear you out. <sighs> Which is sad because, like I said, this stuff is not going to make anyone want to actually talk about any of these things. And that's why for a big, a big uh, portion of my own stuff, I really don't engage with people about this stuff like outside of 
possibly running for office, I I don't um, see much of a point to like having the the back and forth. But that's just me. Oh, these elections, they are just an extremely toxic part of our everyday culture. And uh, I guess the only saving grace is that when we have House and Senate races on years where there's not a presidential election, people just don't give a damn. So they're they're not inclined to feel bad or feel angry towards you one way or the other, if depending on who you support. But this is it's just going to keep getting worse and worse, unfortunately.